Good morning. Good morning. It seems to me whenever we see Jesus interacting with folks or calling people forth, there's a certain calling of letting go. Uh, when Jesus calls the first followers, the first apostles, you know, leave the nets and come follow me and I'll make you fishers of people. Remember that story. Um, faith in many ways is always, rather than a holding on to, a letting go. A letting go and trusting God. You know, to go to where we can be and leave where we are. To leave what we know for what we don't know. Uh, perhaps even to leave how we identify our lives with our new possibilities ahead of us. And so in today's gospel, we see Jesus encountering this, this man who comes to him and says, you know, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And uh, Jesus says to him, um, you know, follow the laws and the, and the commandments. And, and the man kind of says to paraphrase, look, I've been doing that since I was a kid. You know, what, what, what more do I need to do? Um, and Jesus says, uh, sell what you have. You know, give to the poor. And it says the man walked away grieving. He wasn't ready for that call. Um, he wasn't ready to quite do that. Um, I hope that perhaps at another time that man did come back to Jesus and, and maybe did begin that journey. We don't know that. But there is something to that idea of, of a letting go uh, to follow Jesus. What I want to share with you today are some thoughts on our letting go and making a difference, not only in where we give, but how the giving can transform us in, in our lives. Um, we're in this uh, time of the season where I invite folks to make a pledge to St. Paul's. And as I gathered today, this is my last stewardship homily, and um, I... Uh, I thought of some things we've done over the years. Some folks had even said to me, George, please do this before you go. This kind of, so I'll, I'll, I'll share something with you. But I hope this can lead you to, to see stewardship as not just an annual campaign, not just about a pledge form, not just about money, but to see stewardship as a spiritual practice, a transformative spiritual practice that many of you are already on, many already deeply into this journey. Some are just starting out. Some perhaps had never been part of a church community growing up and don't know what this is all about and may think that it's just about the money. It is, but it's more than that. So I want to give an example today for you. We're not in Children's Chapel. We're, we're here today. I want you to look at this as a, as a, a sign of, of, of your money, uh, perhaps a sign of your budget uh, and what it looks like. And everyone's budget's different. Everyone's value here is different. But I want to suggest some ways that we are called to so how some use those resources. Remember, as followers of Christ, we believe that everything has been given to us by God. It's all gift. And we're the stewards of it. How do we steward? How do we care for what's been given to us? Well, many of us have expenses like um, rent. If you rent a place to live. Uh, or a mortgage. A mortgage is, you know, includes sometimes you know, includes utilities. I'm, I'm, I'm including utilities in that. Taxes in that. Things that we, that we pay each month. Um, I did a little study of the average income to mortgage kind of around here in, in the Cary area. And um, so we, some of our budget, some of our money goes to that, to pay the mortgage, taxes. Um, being here in this area, transportation, you kind of need a car. And um, many of you may have a car or maybe two. Or maybe you have a, a young college child going to college who needs transportation, you know. Maybe you gave them the old car and you need to get a new one, you know. There's, there's auto loans, maybe one or two. 
these, these categories may not apply to everybody, but they're somewhat part of some people's lives. Well, what about food? Got to buy food, feed ourselves, our family. And uh, the times we live, it's, very, it's a very challenging thing, you know. With oftentimes in a household, uh, both parents may work, and the idea of coming home and having dinner together may not always be possible with the hours that we work. And there's a lot more takeout that happens. Some companies even devote themselves to that. You know, buy these, throw them in the microwave, and you've got your food. There's also takeout and just buying, buying food to nourish us and feed us. That's an expense that comes out of this budget. These aren't in any order of priority, but I think they're common. There may be some I miss. Medical expenses. Some of you may need to pay your premiums for your insurance. Um, you may have a high deductible uh, that you need to pay when you do get medical care. You know, those are, those are dollars that come in and out, go out of uh, our, our, our regular budget. And you know what those are, those numbers, but we, you know, we, if we're budgeting, we tend to put those aside. Debt. Uh, many young folks here who have come out of college or grad school um, have debt, college debt, college loans. Credit card debt. You know, maybe you bought that wonderful home and it needs furniture, um, and maybe you just threw that on a card to, so you could get the stuff in, and you're paying that over time. There's debt, all kinds of debt that we, that we have, we're responsible for, uh, for some of the things that we have. Excuse my time to cut this. Entertainment. You know, go out to the movies, go out to dinner, have fun, take the kids out, um, spend time together on weekends, cooking out, doing things. I mean, just having fun. We want to, you know, enjoy our lives. And so um, there's, there's some expenses for that, too, that come out of our budget. Um, phones, Internet. You know, we, at our house, we started streaming. Save a lot of money there and paying cable. You know, we were late to that game. But, uh, but we, we have, these, the, we have these, uh, these, uh, these expenses that we, that we cover. Household expenses. You know, things like you need a new light fixture. You need to fix something. Something that pops up. Maybe you choose to have someone mow your lawn, um, and that's an expense. Some of us mow own lawns, and some have service to come in and do it for whatever reasons. Busy lifestyle, busy, busy time in your lives. Some are older and can't quite do those things anymore, but those, those are there. The, 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 the household, caring for the house, fixing the roof, fixing the gutters, things that come up that need tending to. Then there's a category. I know we have this category in, in our budget. You may have, your budget may be on an Excel spreadsheet or some sort of graph paper. You know, ours is on a, a yellow legal pad. You know, we're kind of, we're the, that's how sophisticated we are. But we have a budget. But there's also the, the, the area, I call it miscellaneous. Things that just, you can't even imagine. I'm sure I didn't cover all the topics in this, in this explanation at all. But um, miscellaneous, just, geez, I, I hope we can have some money put aside, if we can, to cover unexpected things that come up. And so there's miscellaneous. And there's lots of other categories. I hope you get just the example here. But if we're lucky, if we're lucky, we have something left over. And we can say to ourselves, what am I going to do with this? And we may say, I'm going to give this away. I'm going to give this away. I've been blessed with all this. I want to give this away. And you may find an organization that you want to support, or you may say St. Paul's. You know, we give what's left over. Thank you for that. Thank you for what you give in whatever way that you do. 
But our budget tends to take care of us. And then what's left over will we'll offer in some way, shape, or form, hoping to bring transformation to wherever we're giving it. That sometimes is a place where the journey of stewardship begins. Begins. And what I want to propose to you today is a way to enter ever more deeply into that. Ever more deeply into that. So that the gift that I give is not just given in hope that it will transform or change where I give it, but that what I give will transform me, will change me. That's where stewardship becomes a spiritual practice. This idea of following Christ is not just a concept. It's not just an idea. It's just not quotes from Richard Rohr or Thomas Merton or great spiritual writer. It's not about, I like that quote. I like that idea. It's about being transformed by what we encounter. And I'm going to tell you something. One way that your life, I guarantee, will be transformed if you are willing to to accept the call into a deeper, transformative experience of stewardship. And one way I propose to you is proportional giving. To start where you are, and many may be further along on the journey, many of you model stewardship in this parish, and I've learned from you over the years. But take this and say to yourself, what, so what is this? What percentage of what God has given me in my income and my resources, whether you're retired or you're still working or you, you have some kind of resources, what, what percentage is this of that? And start there. Name that. And proportional giving invites you each year to consider growing ever more deeply into that. Perhaps next year it's a little more. A little more. It can change your life. So stewardship is not just about giving the money, but it's about how can you be transformed. Here's that same budget. If we can enter enter ever more deeply into this, wherever here is a good spot. We make a pledge. We decide, this is what I'm going to give this year. It's the first thing on my budget. On our yellow legal pad, the first item is giving. And we give this to God. We take what's left over. And this can be transformative. This can have us wonder, do I really need that much for that? This can influence how we make our decisions. That's the gift of stewardship. There's a sacrificial component to it. It will change and transform our lives as well. As well as where we share the gift. We will be transformed. And we'll learn to live in this area. And if in making a pledge we say to ourselves, I don't know, this seems like an awful lot to give. I'm not too sure. That's a good place to be. <laughs> That's a good place to be, to engage in that. You know, and, and, and at home, talk, talk with your partner, your spouse. Talk about these kinds of things. Because it can be transformative. It can change your life. That, to me, is what, what stewardship is about. It's not just an annual campaign, although it is. <laughs> it's not just about pledge forms, but it is. But all those are expressions of this spiritual practice that we all live into. Um, when I see people whose lives are transformed, I've seen people who live like this, not like this, who give what's oftentimes called in the, in the scriptures, the first fruits. 
in the, in the Hebrew scriptures, when the harvest came, they gave the first fruits to God. They didn't give what was left over in the tractor at the end of the day. <laughs> they first fruits. And that's, I'd like to invite you to consider that. Wherever that is for you. So there's not some dollar amount that's to be named. It's where you are in this journey. Starting out, perhaps just entering into it, perhaps long along the way. And there are folks here that are living this ever so deeply. And we appreciate all those gifts. All those gifts. Because your life's being transformed if you can enter into this. And so we're going to ask you to consider your pledge for 2025 to support just the incredible things happening here at St. Paul's. The momentum here is just unbelievable. Just look at the announcements today. We're flowing into no more pages, and those are just some of the things happening. Our youth program is about 40 kids coming, youth coming on, I don't like to be called kids, but about 40 kids <laughs> coming on, on Sunday evenings. Our, our church school, Sunday school program is vibrant and alive. Uh, our choir has come back to such fullness in the last few years. Um, the ministries you do beyond here, you want to talk about transformative work, transformative ministry, you want to be part of this parish, and you want to support this parish to do that kind of work in the community. That makes a real difference. I encourage you to make your pledge this year. Um, we'd like you to have that done by October 27th. Um, if you don't mind, if you could do that for me. <laughs> Just that before I go, I have a good sense of where we're heading. There's wonderful, wonderful opportunities ahead. And your support for, for transition, for search committee work, for clergy who will help us out during this transition, we need your support. Don't let the momentum slow down. It's way ahead of us. And we're called to support that. So... Wherever you are on the journey, continue forward and may it transform you and see this as an incredible spiritual practice where your feet hit the ground. Your feet hit the ground and it makes a difference.